have proved fascinating. We have found, for example, when a victim of cholera comes into the hospital in Calcutta, we have done some analyses by extracting the DNA from the clinical sample. And through techniques we have devised, we find that that individual may carry, indeed, the causative agent of cholera, but that individual may have up to 10 other pathogens. Generally speaking, rotavirus, giardia, salmonella, shigella, as well as the cholera agent that has brought the individual to the hospital. In studies of cohorts from families where the cholera victim has come into the hospital but do not have the disease, we find that in studying a sample from those individuals, they have very low numbers of pathogens to which they can be resistant. This is very new information, but it means that we need to understand safe water as a vehicle, potential vehicle, uh, if it is not safe water, of more than one disease at a given time. And that we can eradicate, or let us say we can control, that's a better word, we can control probably two dozen diseases transmitted by water, for which we have vaccines for maybe two or three, by simply providing safe water. And that's a global activity. Food security, energy, these are also problems that are global, as well as education. I would say educating girls is again one of these primary activities that provides national security, economic stability, and social stability for nations. We have found that fertility is directly related to the education of girls. In Bangladesh, for example, where I have worked for some 30 years, the fertility rate has dropped from about eight to the same as the United States, 2.5. This is astounding to have occurred in the last 20 or 25 years, mainly due to the fact that girls have been educated and women have been empowered through the microloan and provided with the opportunity to participate in the economy. So these are issues that are education, science, technology, and really critical for all nations. So how do we promote science diplomacy? How do, how do you participate in science and engineering technology as a diplomatic tool? Science and technology agreements are general frameworks that allow us to facilitate bilaterals, government to government, science and technology collaboration. And they're generally implemented through memorandum of understanding, a memoranda of understanding between the collaborating parties. And I'm very proud, very pleased that the U.S.-Malaysia Science and Technology Agreement, brand new, signed by the Malaysian Foreign Minister Anifar Aman and the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. This was in November 2010. So we are now bonded the U.S. and Malaysia. We are in friendship, we are in collaboration, and this is one of about 50 bilateral science and technology agreements the U.S. has in place, and this is the most recent and one of the most important. The accomplishments from these kinds of S&T cooperations in the past have led to discovering a new element in energy, raising food safety standards in countries through bilateral agreements, climate monitoring, which is very, very important, tsunami monitoring. This is really critical in this part of the world. Uh, unified standards for manufacturing, seismic monitoring systems. These are just some of the examples through the S&T agreements, science, um, envoy science um, uh, collaborations 
that are all part of what we term science diplomacy, science and technology diplomacy. Now, how we can also carry these out is through video conferences, face-to-face -face meetings, which are really important, but once the meetings, for example, this meeting this past week that I've been able to spend here in Malaysia, I am certain is going to be followed up by uh, Skype conversations, by video conferences, by collaborations and connections over the next year, and certainly will be carried on through the diplomatic corps of Malaysia and the United States. The Embassy Science Fellows is also another aspect of how we can maintain the exchange, and that is there are about 250 Embassy Science Fellows that have been loaned by the U.S. government for short-term consultancies in our partner countries since 2001. So we would anticipate that we would have Science Fellows who can visit Malaysia and spend some time here working with you. Education exchanges are extremely important. We have a very robust science education system, uh, but it's a challenge. Science and engineering technology, K-12, for example, major challenge in the United States. And one of the proposed mechanisms, which I would like to throw out to you, extend to you, is supporting an increased emphasis on science in K-12 schools through what we call the Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment, GLOBE, G-L-O-B-E. It's a worldwide, hands-on, primary and secondary school-based science education program. It, it's designed to enhance collaboration between uh, students, teachers, scientists, um, to environment and earth science. The partners in the U.S. include the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, the National Oceanic um, and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and the National Science Foundation. They are participation and so uh, participating so that linking with counterparts in Malaysia can be very, very effective. And right now there are about 54,000 globe trained teachers representing about 24,000 schools around the world. We welcome Malaysia's participation in GLOBE. There are collaborations in public health and medicine that are very important. NIH is, is one very good example. And my understanding is that Malaysian scientists already receive extramural funding from about five of the NIH 27 institutes and centers. Um, I think in FY10, there were seven awards to Malaysian researchers. And these are foreign components of the domestic awards uh, that NIH has funded. And there are at least seven, probably more, Malaysian postdocs right now at NIH. That can be extended expanded, extended, and I think that is a challenge for us. I was very pleased to participate as a faculty member at Johns Hopkins in the wonderful uh, celebration uh, and announcement of the new Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and Hospital um, in Malaysia, and that the first students will be accepted into a graduate medical school right here. You may or may not know that Johns Hopkins Hospital has been ranked as the number one hospital in the United States every year for the past 10 years. So you are getting the best of the best here as a partner in Malaysia. MIT is also establishing a program here in Malaysia in logistics and supply chain man uh, management. Uh, I think MIT has about four such centers, and this is the first one in Asia. So that also is an indication of, of the very high esteem and the excitement for this collaboration between the U.S. and Malaysia. Business plays a big role. 
The um, R&D investment by the private sector is, is obviously very important and significant. Um, and discussions uh, this morning with the biotech industry folks, um, we looked at ways that um, private R&D research can drive innovation and how perhaps small companies in the U.S. startups can partner with startups in Malaysia as a new mechanism for enhancing growth in both countries of those given companies. This is a, a way that I think we can expand that, that kind of um, collaboration. The uh, U.S. companies in electronic sector are already doing extensive R&D here, uh, developing cutting edge products that that are already integrated into the, glo the global supply chains. But this is an area where we want to expand in this partnership uh, in working with Malaysia. Now, I, I um, will be visiting a biotech company this afternoon and having uh, helped establish biotechnology in Maryland, the state of Maryland in 1985, which is now thriving. In fact, Maryland, depending on how you look at the data, is either number two or number three to um, um, California in the biotech industry. So we're hoping that we can enhance uh, the interactions with the state of Maryland, and I would suggest that future visits, perhaps by the Prime Minister or the Minister of Science Advisor, or the Minister of Science, with the governor of the state of Maryland would be beneficial. Um, the governor has formed a biotech council very similar to the biotech net that um, the government of Malaysia has formed. And this would be one of, an, one example of the kind of interactions that could be engendered with other governors of other states that have made biotechnology a major thrust. Now, one of the suggestions that I feel very strongly about and um, um, you've already heard from your science advisor, is the laboratory linkages. My experience is that the um, 20th century was the century where we sent individual scientists on various fellowship programs to another country to work for a year or two or three years on a postdoc and then return. But in the 21st century, when we have Skype and video conferencing, email, collaborations, and the ability within a day to go to any part of the world practically, it seems much more effective to fund a principal investigator in Malaysia, a principal investigator in the United States, who will link together to solve a common problem of research funding jointly provided by the U.S. and Malaysia. And the students then have the opportunity to travel to the laboratory in the U.S. The students in the U.S. travel to Malaysia, uh, work for a week, three weeks, three months, longer, shorter, um, interact consistently and constantly over this three to five year period. This provides an opportunity for genuine friendships to form, long-lasting friendships, long-lasting collaborations, and also provides an opportunity for interdisciplinary addressing the complex problems of climate change, of infectious disease, of food safety, etc. So I would suggest that this might be a 21st century approach. I would like to, if possible, just to show very briefly, if um, I may, I'm, I'm going to go through and rush through just to the slides that I want to make a point. This is um, a lecture that I have gave recently at Stanford University and uh, UC Berkeley. Thank you. Um, if I, just to demonstrate how